Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Breitling Super Ocean Heritage 46. Um, not a new watch, but one that they still sell and is quite popular because it's a sexy looking timepiece. This came out at least 10 years ago, I think, and I've loved it for a long time. It's actually been one of my, like, because uh, I love dive watches. It's kind of been one of my, I don't want to call it grail watch, but it's definitely been something that I've had my eye on for a long time because I've always enjoyed how it looks and I think that it's aged pretty well. Over the years, Breitling has made various versions of the Super Ocean Heritage. Um, this is the biggest one at 46 millimeters wide. There's been a 42 millimeter. I think there's been even smaller. There's been chronograph versions. There's been the steel version. There's been gold versions. There's been one in the middle. There's di different colors. There's a lot of stuff in the sort of super ocean universe. Um, and then that doesn't even mention all the super ocean watches. The super ocean heritage are the ones that have sort of this, this uh, retro vintage look to it. Um, <clears throat> I think it's important to take into consideration the various features that are available <clears throat> in a lot of today's watches because I think that, you know, if Breitling was going to update the Super Ocean Heritage, it wouldn't necessarily need to change the look too much. It would just need to sort of add some updated features. And some of the things that are definitely showing their age at this point are the, uh, the rotating bezel insert <clears throat> is uh, aluminum, whereas a lot of today's ones are, are ceramic. Um, turning the bezel still has a very good solid feel to it. Uh, I think it's a 120 click bezel and it feels pretty good. Um, Diving watch purists will definitely point out that it's perhaps not a true professional dive watch because there's no loom on the rotating bezel, especially no loom pip at 12 o'clock. So that's definitely something that might be a concern if you're if you're uh, you know really into um, professional diving. Also, in terms of loom, while the hour and minute hand are hand are nicely loomed, there's only sort of small um, loom dots um, around the hour markers there. Um, so the loom for a diving watch isn't amazing. And also water resistance is 200 meters. And the thing is, the standard Super Ocean, not the Heritage, but the standard Breitling Super Ocean is water resistant to like 1,000 meters. <clears throat> and then they have various ones in between. Um, inside the watch is a base edit movement. I think it's a, they call it the Breitling Caliber 17. Um, it's a 4 hertz, 40 hour power reserve. I, I think, I'm pretty sure it's just like an edit 2892. Um, but you know, I think that's something they could up. The, the watch is, you know, it's not it's not crazy pricey for a Breitling, but it's definitely up there. Where the watch sort of makes its mark is in sort of sex appeal. Like I said, it is a good looking watch. Um, it's actually the first watch on this Milanese mesh metal style strap that I ever liked. Um, you can also get it on their, I think it's the Pro Diver strap. It's the one with the rubber one with the little portholes in it. But it definitely has an elegance to it that I think is is almost unparalleled. There's few other watches that are sort of these retro looking dive watches, which I think are, are as elegant. I could easily say one of them would be the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, which is, um, I think the retail price is something like three times this, uh, maybe even a little bit more than three times this. Um, at 46 millimeters wide, it's 13.6 millimeters thick. So it's not the most, it's not the thickest watch in the world, but it's definitely um, a dive watch. There's no, um, uh, crown guard there, uh, which is definitely sort of part of the vintage look. I think uh, I think a lot of modern dive watches have the crown guard, which is pretty good, and that's obviously meant to protect the crown if you're hitting it on something. So this is definitely a dive-worthy watch, and it's good for recreational diving, and it's good for desk diving, of course, which basically means you don't take it diving. But as a professional diving watch, um, you really probably want to go with Breitling's uh, regular Super Ocean watches that I'd say are much more... Um, suited to sort of current professional diving needs, um, whereas the Super Ocean Heritage is more of a, uh, an attractive, sexy Swiss diver that, that can go underwater but doesn't have all those uh, features that the, the, the pro, pro diving um, watch guys are, are, are going to like. But again, they do a really nice job. With, what I think is also interesting is um, the Applied B Breitling logo there. You don't actually have that logo. Sometimes you have the wing logo on a lot of the models. So it's interesting to see the various types of applied logo that you'll see. Um, and the wing one might not be there because those might be on their on their pilot watches. Um, well, not all pilot watches. I know the Breitling for Bentley ones have the wing logo. 
but I'm just looking at some of the little differences and interesting elements of the Super Ocean Heritage. I still like the watch a lot. I think it's very attractive. It feels comfortable. It looks good. And sort of the restrained nature of the watch makes it, I would say, a little bit different among Breitling watches, which definitely have a reputation for being more sort of macho and, and um, you know, busy in terms of the way that the dials are designed. Um, aging well. Um, perhaps Breitling will, will get, go around the next couple of years to uh, updating the Super Ocean Heritage. Um, but until then, this is what we have and still quite a nice watch. Um, retail price for the Breitling Super Ocean Heritage 46 um, is $4,405. And you can see the full review on a blog to watch. Thanks.